YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, good evening. Um, got a fun match for you here, I'm sure. Got Ninja Hunt over here playing as the Beastman. Ninja Hunt is a avid uh, Twitch streamer when it comes to Total War Warhammer. This guy's played more battles in the game already than I probably will over the lifespan of it. So, love the dedication that he has to the, uh, the game, and obviously it's cool to have people like him in the Total War content creator community. Anyway, he's hosting a tournament. I'll have details in the uh, description, but let's watch what happens here. This is going to be Strigoi Ghoul King on his Terror Geist facing up against the Beastman Army of Ninja Hunt. He's got four Bestigor Herd up front, supported by, looks like, five Ungor Spears behind. And we got some magic. Okay, spawning up a Cy or no, 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 a Feral Manticore. We got a giant. Two Gorbals, and then the Lord is just a Beast Lord. So Bestigor coming into the uh, Vampire Counts. There's a Mortis Engine present. Sternsman Graveguard, which is a significant threat. Crypt Horrors. Gorbals immediately break through the line. The Giant's through the line. The Giant's going to be a problem for the Vampires. The uh, I like this, though. The Manticore is keeping the uh, Terrorgeist busy, which is always a good thing. There's two Banshees headed in as well. Doomflock being used. Um, I mean, the vampires have so much regeneration. I like this because it's just going to help tear away some of that regeneration. So, nice use there. Here comes the Mortis Engine, plowing on through the Beastman units and trying to get into the back lines. Definitely understandable. The Mortis Engine has the mass to do that relatively easy. Just kind of see how the battle's going overall. I mean, it is quite the mosh pit here. In between two factions that really don't rely heavily on skirmishers, this is no surprise. So, yeah, Cryptors, all this other stuff, very much alive uh, with the Ghoul King. But it looks like the Ghoul King's struggling to put away the Feral Manticore. It's interesting. I don't know if he just hasn't been focused on it or what. Here comes the Mortis Engine. Going to make some rear charges over here. And over here, the, uh, the Beastmen are going to be feeling the pain of the Mortis Engine, that's for sure. So, Beastmen struggling just a little bit. But the Giant is getting good kills. He's right here. He's keeping the Banshees busy. The White King is up here against two Gorbals, and uh, the Manticore is actually doing extremely well versus the Terror Geist. I wouldn't have thought this. Interesting. It's actually turned out to be quite a nice counter there because there's nothing else to support the Terror Geist. So, and it looks like uh, the Strigoi is going to be run away from this, probably in an attempt to go heal some more, but the Manticore can chase. We'll see whether or not it's able to successfully chase. When we go back into the fight, the gore bulls are still very much alive. You've got a decent amount of gore herds still alive. And a couple of best of gore that are still hanging around. Otherwise, the mortis engine's being used to chase off these units over here, which is actually a huge mistake. If that, um, that mortis engine needs to be parked right here, uh, putting damage out on all these beastmen units, the giant ends up with 58 kills. It's about to die to a combination of banshees and uh, sternsmen and skeleton spears. So a pretty tight fight still. Got some Bestigor herd that no doubt Ninja Hunt will probably be bringing back to the battle. I really like the use of the, uh, the Manticore here. I don't know if it was unexpected or not, but uh, interesting use. And then there was the combination of Elite Infantry with Cheap Infantry. The Beast Lord's still very much alive, which is honestly kind of surprising considering how many uh, vampire enemies have been around and the uh, Cryptors are starting to suffer pretty badly because they're pulling away from a spear unit there. The uh, skeleton warriors here can't finish the job versus the uh, Ungor spear. Let's see how the Sternsmen are doing. Sternsmen only 17 kills because they've been fighting up against large units the whole time. Take a look here. Deadly Onslaught, Apocalyptic Vision being used here. Same thing on the other Gorbel. Just kind of see where we're at here. Both Banshees still alive, and they are doing some pretty decent damage at this point to uh, the Beast Lord, but they're also taking a ton of damage from the Gorbals. Gorbals can dish a lot of damage, and then the Cryptor is being kept busy by just a unit of cheap spearmen. It's definitely a good thing for the, uh, the Beastmen, but here they're going to come in, and they're going to poison all these units, so that's going to be unfortunate for the Beastmen and probably be enough to force the Beast Lord out of the fight. You can see just how long the vampires can hold on for. They're not even done regenerating yet. And then the Mortis Engine's back. 
so hit points are going to start being stripped from all of the uh, Beastmen units. Let's see whether or not the healing potion's been used yet for uh, the Gorbals. Otherwise, the numbers of vampires are, have fallen, but their leaders and hero units are still very much alive. So this is going to be a tough fight to finish, but it, it looks like the Strigoi is off the field. The Bray Shaman of Beast is coming back. So it looks like the uh, power bar just leveled out a little bit. The White King's chasing off the Beast Lord along with the Banshee. That's going to leave the Gorbals here who did still have a healing potion. And they're going to get a lot of damage done while these units aren't around to support. I mean, the Mortis Engine going out here and the, the White King and the Banshee. Yeah, they killed the Beast Lord, which is, it's big. Um, but the Gorbals are still very much alive and they're over here absolutely wrecking some pretty important vampire units, including the Sternsmen. Who really don't want to be in a fight with two Gorbals, that's for sure. Honestly, I don't think any of these units want to be in a fight with two Gorbals. And then the Feral Manticore can provide some charge support. So I'm thinking this is very much looking like it's in control of the Beastmen, even though the power bar doesn't really agree. Because uh, the White King just took immense damage from two, uh, two Gorbal charges. He's going to be in some big trouble here. Yeah, look at that Gorbal just rolling all over him. And then the... Uh, the Mortis Engine's just not meant for this kind of fight at all. So if it gets in here for too long, it's going to be a bad deal. The White King is gone. And uh, the Sternsman is down to 22 unit models. They are still replenishing. And then a Banshee, which I don't believe has a chance versus two Gore Bulls. The Mortis Engine, it can't really cause any melee damage. But at the same time, I'm not really sure why this player isn't keeping it up here closer to this fight. To at least tear away at the hit points of the, the Gore Bulls. Because the Gore Bulls are, are really jacking up the, uh, the Banshee without any support there from the Mortis Engine. Maybe the Mortis Engine is thinking to come out here and try and sway the power bar. But... Yeah, I'm not really sure what what the play was from the vampire player. If you all know, let me know. Look at this Sternsman. Finally crumbled out. Or it's about to crumble out. There's still nine units there. And it's going to get hit by an invocation. And, er, no, it's a doom flock. <laughs> They're dead. So, yeah. That's going to be the end of that. And then the Mortis Engine's not going to take much damage from the Doom Flock. But look at this. Just with the Mortis Engine, it's saying that it has a pretty good chance. Let's look at the speeds. It's only 50 speed, and Gorbel has 84 speed, especially with that boost. So, yeah, that's going to be a victory. So, nice victory by Ninja Hun there against the Vampires, who can definitely be a tricky opponent. It was really interesting to see uh, how long the cheaper um, infantry for the Beastmen actually stayed in that fight. I would have expected them to potentially route uh, a lot faster. Um, I think the Mortis Engine could have been used a little bit better by the Vampire player, but uh, I don't want to discredit some of the things here that I think Ninja Hun did well, uh, which was that uh, spawning up a Manticore ended up being a really nice choice versus the Vampires here. And I can see that being a nice choice in a couple of ways. I mean, a... Um a Cygor could be an interesting cho choice versus the Vampires too because it kills units. Um, quite a lot of them, and then they can't replenish. You know, you'd have to use the invocation to hack, but of course they probably would use that invocation. I like, though, the, the Manticore adds a certain element there, too, which would allow it to swoop in and go after vampire heroes or maybe even a Mortis Engine or something like that. So that's that's a potentially interesting pick. I'd be curious to see a comment from Ninja Hunt on why he picked the uh, Manticore over a Cygore versus the Vampires, just to kind of get his thoughts, or you all tell me what you think too. Uh, not a very impressive performance from the Bestigore herd. I, I rarely ever see a strong performance from these guys. Now, of course, they were up against Graveguard and the Sternsman, supported by Cryptor, so I don't know if I should expect a good performance. That may be expecting too much. This Gore herd, though, and this Ungor herd did just fine. They were obviously up against cheaper vampire enemies, but still a relatively solid performance. Um, the Gorbals did a huge amount of work here, and honestly the Beast Lord did pretty good considering how long it stayed in the fight. And then I, a Giant to me is just never generally a bad pick versus the vampires. Um, so I, I would think it'd be a pretty solid pick in fact. 
Interesting, though, to see two Banshees, for instance, rather than, like, a, uh, a Blood Knight. Um, but who knows? Again, I don't fully understand all these units. I haven't done a ton of testing with them. There may be a reason. But hope you all enjoyed the match from Ninja Hun. He is hosting the Dogs of War 3 tournament. I'll have a link to his Twitch channel. I'm also going to have a link to the tournament information that he sent me. Um, you can still sign up for this tournament. Uh, the dates and everything will be down there in the link. Please go uh, check it out. And I'll uh, make sure that that's all available to you. Uh, there's prize money involved. It's not a huge prize, but it's a prize. And if you want to go play a game you love and win it and potentially take home some prize, um, then there's nothing wrong with that. I think you win some uh, decent Steam gift cards if you go um, participate in the tournament. And it's sure to be a good time. And if you want to see this tournament, I'm sure Ninja Hunt will be streaming some of it. So again, go check out the link for his stream. Appreciate him sending me this replay. Appreciate you, my awesome viewers, for coming around and watching this material and making this fun and uh, I really enjoy making it for you every day and I also want to say thank you to those who helped me today by going and responding to the tweet against my ISP huge help really appreciate it they haven't helped me yet but you all did and it was a huge showing and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that uh, it, was, it was a great deal of help and I'm absolutely honored to see so many people help me uh, appreciate MSI for sponsoring this build that I'm recording with Air of Carthage signing out I'll see you all back soon with some more Beast Week.